so you've been doing a great job doing all this coding and look at all the stuff that we've learned. We've actually put together this pretty cool site here. Like, I mean, okay, it doesn't look quite as fancy as this yet, but this is functional. Okay, this is, this is pretty cool. So here's a question though. How do you know that there's no errors here? Um, well, you might think, well, I know there's no errors there. I'm looking at the page and it's working. Well, you know, we haven't actually tested this in, in other browsers yet. And on top of that, even if we did, so we could go and we could test it out in Firefox and Safari and Opera, but you know, we're not going to be able to test it out in every single browser out there. Although I do encourage you to test it out where you can. Uh, but there's so many different configurations and, you know, and I don't have a PC, so I can't test it out on a PC. There's so many different things. Um, plus, you could just have errors in your code that you don't know about that are going to creep up on you later and cause serious problems. Um, so what I recommend you do, in fact, what I insist you do, is validate your code and and I kind of I kind of skipped this because I just wanted to get going I was so excited about showing you all about this you know the, the tags and stuff like that 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 I skipped the validation part and and I kind of shouldn't have because because validation is something that whenever I'm t I'm writing web pages um, it's better to do it at the beginning and do it early and do it often because if there's going to be a mistake in your code a validator an online validator will find it sooner rather than later and it's much easier to fix mistakes when you find out about them sooner. Um, validators are also useful like if for some reason your code just isn't working the way you think it should be working and you can't figure out why, run it through the validator. Chances are the validator, the validator is just a computer. Validator, you know, will will find that error and will tell you what it is and that's just a really great tool. So, uh, so where do you find the validator? I like to use the W3C markup validation service. It's located at validator.w3.org. This is a free service. Fantastic. And um, so you go here and all you need to do is there's different methods to do your validation because uh, validating by URI is for pages that are actually online right now. So we could actually, you know, copy this address and put it into this box right here and click the check button and that would check that. Uh, but we haven't published our website online yet, so we can't do that. So that's okay because we can validate by file upload. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find our file and our file is actually located. In fact, you know, I already have it here. I'm, I'm just I have to go find the file. It's in my coming soon folder. It's the index.html file that we want to validate. So I'm going to upload that here and I'm just going to click check. And look at that. It tells us, it gives us the green bar. The green bar is what we're looking for. If there's errors, we're going to have a red bar. And then if there's if there's errors there, this it's you're going to scroll down and there's going to be some 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 feedback down there. Um, it tells us this document was tentatively checked as HTML5. Why does this say tentatively? That's because the HTML5 is still sort of being developed. So, you know, in the absence of a strict definition of what is is and isn't allowed and what is and is not correct HTML code. You know, the W3C markup validation service, the best they can, they can do is say, well, you know, assuming what we know about HTML5 is correct, your code is valid. That's good enough for you and me. All right. Um, there's a couple warnings here. For the purpose of what we're doing, we're not going to worry about those. The big thing is we're looking for that green bar. Okay, if you don't get that green bar, there's a problem and you need to figure out what that is. Um, so we can ignore all the notes and potential issues. I mean, like, you know, if you're a serious web developer, you're probably not going to ignore those. But think of this as a learning tool. It's a tool. Okay. Um, and then at the very bottom, if, there were, if, if that was red, it would say, the, you know, it would tell you what the issues were. Let's actually, you know what, let's put in a mistake in here and let's see what happens. Okay, what I'm going to do is on line 16 here, do you see right there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an extra close p tag just on its own, okay? Like pretend that we had an extra paragraph in there and then we deleted it and then we forgot to delete this extra p tag, okay? So let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to go back to just the validator. Let's go to file upload and let's re-upload this file and let's just see what happens, okay? And here we say, oh, an error found while checking this document, okay? And it tells us we have one error. We don't worry about the warnings, but we do care about that error. So to find out about the error, let's scroll down. And then we want to see this, this validation output, one error. And then here it tells us, remember when I was telling you that, that it tells you, it tells you what line to look at? Line 16, 
it says no p element in scope but a p n tag seen so okay here's the thing this is a computer so you sort of have to translate what it's telling you but just just take your time and read what it's saying it's telling you that there's no p there there is a p n tag but there's no p element in the scope or it doesn't see this p in other words it doesn't see the opening p element and that's all and that makes sense right there's no opening paragraph element here there's just a closing one so we go ah oh, and it told us it told us look hey look on line 16 so we say ah oh, yeah line 16 why why is that there that's so dumb okay so you can delete that and then when you just go and you can re-upload that and then you can check again oh you know what what's the problem i didn't save ah oh here's something i never mentioned about text wrangler Sorry, small tangent here. Um, do you notice this little black dot right here? Man, I should have mentioned this ages ago, but better late than never. When there's a black dot next to your file name in Text Wrangler, it means that you have unsaved changes. And that's exactly what happened here. I deleted that extra closing P tag, but I didn't actually save it. I need to actually save that. And then as soon as I hit save, that black dot disappears. So when there's no black dot, it tells you, hey, oh, it's all good. Okay, and then I could upload that and that'll work. Um, sometimes you'll see, if I move my cursor somewhere else, you'll suddenly see an open dot. And that just tells you, hey, you haven't made any changes yet, but your cursor's in a different place. That's all that's telling you. As soon as you make a change, as soon as, let's say, I were to, you know, change that to, to I want to add a letter there. Oh, it says, hey, you have unsaved changes. Okay, so that's all there is to that. So now, let's do this again. Oh, I can't believe I, I made that mistake. Let's revalidate that. Ha ha, green and, and all is good with the world. Okay, you now know how to validate your code or how to make sure your HTML code doesn't have any mistakes in it, which is a really, really useful tool. You should validate early. You should validate often. Use this tool whenever you are, you've run into a brick wall and you can't figure out why your code is doing something wrong. It's going to point you in the right direction. One other warning, sometimes, we didn't really see it in this case, but sometimes one mistake in your code can actually cause a ton of different errors here. You might think that your code is fine and then you upload it and then it's telling you 16 errors and you're like, whoa, oh my gosh, and you think, oh, I'm the worst coder in the world. No, you're not. Um, sometimes one or two errors can actually combine to throw off all these crazy errors. And so I recommend that when you, if you find errors in whenever you do the validation thing, focus on one problem at a time, all right? Um, solve one error at once, then revalidate, and you'd be surprised because you might have 16 errors and then you go and you make one tweak to your code and you revalidate it and suddenly you only have three errors. And so don't you know, don't don't knock yourself out trying to solve every problem in the universe. Solve one problem at a time. And it goes without saying, solve the easiest problem first. All right. That's it for this time. I hope that you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.